In this module, we shall first see a generalization of Lagrange's mean value theorem, commonly known as the ratio mean value theorem or the Cauchy mean value theorem or the generalized mean value theorem. And then we shall apply it to prove the famous L'Hopital's rule that is applied right and left by JE students without actually knowing what the statement is. So let's begin with the statement and proof of the ratio mean value theorem. Ratio or Cauchy or generalized generalized mean value theorem. So the statement is as follows. Instead of one function, we now have two functions. If f and g are continuous, continuous on the close interval a, b, differentiable, differentiable on the open interval a, b, interval a, b, then there exists exists a point C in the open interval AB such that f of B minus f of A so far this looks very familiar but into G prime of C is equal to as you can guess G of B minus G of A into f prime of c. Now it might be perplexing why this is called the ratio mean value theorem. Well, if, if g prime is never 0 on open interval a, b, then of course I can write it as ratios. f prime of c by g prime of c is just equal to f of b minus f of a by g of b minus g of a. Fine. Now, this is the generalized mean value theorem simply because if you take the function g to be the function g of x equal to x, the identity function, you recover the Lagrange's mean value theorem. Another comment to be made, the eagle-eyed reader might, start, might be wondering why this is not 0. Well, it is not 0 because we have assumed g prime is never 0 on a, b. Think about why g prime never being 0 will force g of b not to be equal to g of a. Okay. So, let's prove this. The proof is not really hard. Proof. Well, as you can guess, we are going to apply Lagrange's mean value theorem to a special function. Well, we just choose h of x to be equal to f of b minus f of a into, into g of um, x minus g of a plus minus g of b minus g of a into f of x minus f of a. Okay. So, we are just going to apply Lagrange's mean value theorem to this function. First, let's check what h of b is and what h of a is. Well, by the way things have been chosen, when I substitute x equal to b, everything gets cancelled and you get 0. And when you substitute x equal to a also, you get 0. That's the way these functions have been chosen. So, you don't even know, you don't even need to apply the full force of Lagrange's mean value theorem just by Rolle's theorem, just by Rolle's theorem, there exists some c in a, b such that, such that h prime of c is 0. Right? Now, you can immediately see that h prime of c is nothing but f of b minus f of a f of a times g prime of c minus g of b minus g of a 
times f prime of c and this is equal to 0 and this concludes the proof. The second part where I am assuming that g prime is not 0 everywhere follows immediately. Follows immediately. Okay. So, now we are going to apply this ratio mean value theorem to prove one version of L'Hopital's rule. This is not the only version. There are several versions. Please check the notes. So, theorem. Theorem. L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule. 0 by 0 form. Just writing 0 by 0 makes my hand curl up in agony. But that is the way this is usually stated. If f and g, f and g are differentiable, are differentiable in, in the open interval, open interval a, b, a, b. So I am just going to take this to be a finite open interval. Suppose, suppose both f of x and g of x converge to 0 as x approaches b. Okay. If limit x going to b of f prime of x by g prime of x exists and is finite and is finite then then limit x going to be f of x by g of x is equal to limit x going to be f prime of x by g prime of x okay so what we are essentially assuming for all this to go through is that g of x and g prime of x are never 0 on a b. Okay, That is being assumed here otherwise the quotients will not even make sense. So the statement says that if you have two functions that are approaching 0 with the denominator never being 0 then the limit of the ratio f of x by g of x which is going to approach 0 by 0 form will actually exist if limit x going to be f prime of x by g prime of x exists and not only will the limit exist it will coincide with limit x going to be f of f prime of x by g prime of x okay now here is one scenario where it is better to use the terminology and language that we introduce to speak about limits such as some quantities being small as you up get close enough to other quantities so on right so we had introduced this notion of as you get arbitrarily close to and uh, things become arbitrarily small and so on by wording this proof in that language the proof becomes really transparent and clear Whereas when you write down the nitty gritties in terms of epsilon and delta, the proof becomes really convoluted. So what I am going to do is, I am going to just write the proof using the full force of language. Language after all is just a shortcut that eases the process of thinking. So I am going to exploit the full range of our vocabulary in this proof. But nevertheless, this is an introductory course, getting too comfortable with language might hide the difficulties and make you pretend, make you uh, convince yourself that you have understood when in reality you are just deluding yourself. So what I urge you to do is to read this proof, process it, understand it and translate it to rigorous mathematics. Okay, not that the proof I am about to give is not rigorous, it is just using a lot of shortcuts. Okay, now what is the idea behind the proof? Well. What we are going to do is just look at the interval a b we are approaching we are approaching the point b right now what i am going to do is suppose the point x is here i have to show that limit as x goes to b f of x by g of x is equal to l just call this 
is call this L. Okay, limit x going to be f prime x by g prime x, call it L. I want to show that this ratio also converges to L. What I do is, given this x, which is close to b, I choose another t, which is much closer to b. Okay, I choose this t, this t will of course depend on x. I choose this t much closer to b. Now, when you are very, very close to b, we know that f of t and g of t are going to be exceptionally small. In fact, by moving this t sufficiently close to b, we can make a both f of t and g of t as close to 0 as we desire. Okay, And then what I am going to do is, I am going to apply the ratio mean value theorem to the functions f and g between these points t and x. So given any x, I will always be able to find a t such that certain nice things happen. And that's essentially going to be the proof. Okay, so fix, fix x in a, b. Okay, we are going to choose, we are going to prescribe rather, prescribe how to choose t. How to choose t. Okay. Now, what does the ratio mean value theorem say? We are assuming that both g of x and g prime of x are never 0. So, what we can do is this f of x by g of x, this f of x by g of x, we can write it as f of x minus 0 by g of x minus 0. Correct? We can do this. And this is approximately equal to f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t, where this approximation can be made as nice an approximation as you desire by choosing t appropriately. Correct? Now, because of, uh, because of this, we can write this as, we can write this as f prime of some c by g prime of c, where c lies in x t where this lies in x t. Okay? Now, now uh, this as x as x approaches b, t also approaches b. We have just given an x, we can always choose t very very close to b. Then c also approaches b because c is squeezed between squeezed between uh, x and t. Okay? Hence, hence the above ratio, above ratio converges to L, ratio converges to L. Therefore, the original f of x by g of x also converges to L. Now, this is a very rough sketch, very rough sketch that illustrates the idea behind the proof, that illustrates the idea behind the proof. So, let's make it somewhat better. I, this is a little bit too vague. Let's make it somewhat better, add some details. Okay. So, we essentially get the idea how to choose this t. You choose this t very, very close to b so that this approximation becomes very close to an identity. So, what is it that we want to do? We want to analyze f of x by g of x minus l. Okay. We want to analyze this. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to add and subtract terms involving f of t. Okay, f of x by g of x minus f of x minus f of t divided by g of x minus g of t plus f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t minus l. We want to make this quantity arbitrarily small if x is sufficiently close to b. Now, by triangle inequality, of course, we get f of x by g of x minus f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t plus, plus f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t minus l. Okay? Fine. And again, this is equal to f of x by g of x 
minus f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t plus plus mod f prime c by g prime c minus l where c lies between x t okay where c lies between x t now now choose 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 t so that choose t so that this term the first term the first term first term is less than epsilon by 2 so fix epsilon greater than 0 fix epsilon greater than 0 choose t so that the first term is less than epsilon by 2 now we have we have choice of this t and this choice of t depends on x i have not told you how to choose x okay only then can we proceed to choose the point t actually so uh, this should actually come first this should actually come first so let me put the arrow this way first choose choose x close to b such that such that mod f prime of y by g prime of y minus l is less than epsilon by 2 for all y in um, x comma b so just choose this point x sufficiently close to b so that the ratio of the derivatives is already less than uh, epsilon by 2 when you take the difference with the limit l okay so first choose this x so that this happens now choose t sufficiently close to b so that this term also becomes becomes less than epsilon by 2 okay combining both together combining both together combining both together both together we get we get mod f of x by g of x minus l is less than epsilon when x is sufficiently close to b sufficiently close to b okay and this concludes the proof this concludes the proof concludes the proof okay so the only step that is actually vague is this choice of this point um, x is not really vague. I am just saying that there will be some point, there will be su for sufficiently close to b, there will be, uh, you can choose such that mod f, pri um, f prime y by g prime y minus l is less than epsilon by 2. That's just coming from the definition of limit. So there is no, uh, no impreciseness here. The impreciseness is to say that this quantity, this quantity can be made less than epsilon by 2 if t is sufficiently close to b. I leave it to you to determine in terms of the functions f and g how you have to choose this point t. That's not really hard. But it's clear that it can be done. You just have to expand this f of x by g of x minus f of x minus f of t by g of x minus g of t. You just have to expand it and analyze those terms and determine how you have to choose this point t. Okay. So, I leave it to you to complete the proof. So, this concludes this module. You are watching the course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the ratio mean value theorem and L'Hopital's rule.